Have you ever looked outside when it's snowing and wondered how snowflakes get their shapes and how all those unique combinations can occur? A snowflake typically forms in extremely cold weather when a droplet of water freezes onto a tiny dust or pollen particle. This creates a seed crystal and as the tiny ice crystal falls, more water vapor freezes onto the primary structure building new, more intricate crystals. Those new crystals will form the six arms of the snowflake. This is a major oversimplification of how snowflakes actually form, so let's go a little bit deeper. Let's start with what conditions are necessary for snowflakes to form. Snowflakes form when there is inclement weather and temperatures less than 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything higher in temperature and you will be more likely to see rain, sleet, or hail. The snowflake formation is affected by a couple different parameters that include temperature, air current speed, air current direction, humidity, and the seed particle the snowflake forms on. Temperature has the dominant effect when it comes to what general shape the snowflakes will form into. This chart shows some of the shapes a snowflake is likely to form into at different temperature brackets. Dendrites are probably the formation that comes to mind the most when you think of the intricate lacy snowflakes that are portrayed in movies and storybooks. But there are other types of snowflakes as well. Hollow column snowflakes, for example, look like transparent cylinders and hourglasses. The intricate shapes that the snowflake's arms form are mostly affected by different atmospheric conditions that occur while the snowflake is forming. A crystal can begin to form in a certain way, but as it falls to the ground in a matter of minutes or even seconds, that formation can be changed by differences in the surrounding environment. The six arms, however, experience extremely similar atmospheric conditions, so they end up looking almost entirely symmetrical. Not all snowflakes are symmetrical though, and it's very unlikely that there have ever been two snowflakes that are perfectly identical. This is because here on Earth, hydrogen doesn't come in just one form. Sometimes there's an extra proton attached to the molecule, forming deuterium. Every one in 300 hydrogen atoms on Earth are actually the isotope deuterium. Because of this, in a snowflake that is made up of water molecules that are comprised of hydrogen and oxygen. Even though the snowflake may look identical to another snowflake to the naked eye, there can be deuterium atoms scattered throughout the structure randomly in different locations. So, no two snowflakes can be exactly identical. But how do almost all snowflakes end up with six arms exactly? We're going to have to look even closer into the cellular structure of water molecules to figure this one out. Water molecules in a solid state, like ice or snow, form hydrogen bonds with one another. In order to decrease entropy, the molecules arrange themselves into a six-sided crystalline structure. As the water molecules accumulate, they form a hexagonal plate. If you look at the shape of a hexagon, you'll see there are six points that extend further into space. Water molecules have a higher probability of attaching to these locations. As more molecules attach to the corners of the hexagon, these locations become even more likely for water molecules to attach to. Because more molecules are attaching onto the corners of the snowflake, they branch out to form the six arms. Snowflakes are a perfect illustrative example of how randomness works. Randomness means lack of pattern or predictability in events. Randomness suggests a disorder in a sequence of symbols or steps such that there is no intelligible pattern or combination. Given slight changes in conditions, snowflakes form completely random patterns. Snowflakes also fall completely randomly to the ground. When a group of middle school and high school students were asked to draw a snowflake distribution pattern, most chose to draw them uniformly, even though snowflakes fall to the ground in completely random ways. Because so many snowflakes fall though, the entire ground seems to be covered in an evenly distributed layer. This is a common misconception of snowflakes. Almost all snowflakes are not aerodynamic enough to fall in a direct way to the ground, and instead drift around at the will of air currents. There can be patterns in the randomness, however. 
Many snowflakes form fractal patterns or recursive designs. A fractal is an object or quantity that displays self-similarity on all levels. This cool computer simulation shows what fractals look like. See how as we zoom in, we can still identify the same pattern. If you want to play around with fractals, check out the link below. Because snowflakes are so complex, it is difficult to capture their beauty and intricacies effectively in many mediums. One of the most challenging mediums to render snowflakes likeness is in computer simulations. MIT along with other universities have learned that in order to create realistic looking snowflakes and snow simulations, there are many components that must come together. You have to be able to create the snowflake itself as well as define the parameters that govern how each individual particle in the snowflake will need to move. Walt Disney Animation Studios partnered up with computer scientists at UCLA and created a program called Matterhorn that creates extremely realistic snow simulations. By updating the forces acting on each individual particle in the snowflake, this generator can accurately create realistic snow movement. It's amazing to see how advanced the simulation is. You should check out the link below to see their software in action. Thank you for watching this video on the science of snowflakes and check out ES333's channel for more exciting educational videos.